The Willow Wren and the Bear From Grimm's Fairy Tales by Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm Translated by Edgar Taylor and Marion Edwards This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Bob Neufeld Once in summertime the bear and the wolf were walking in the forest, and the bear heard a bird singing so beautifully that he said, Brother Wolf, what bird is it that sings so well? That is the king of birds, said the wolf before whom we must bow down. In reality the bird was the willow wren. If that's the case, said the bear, I should very much like to see his royal palace. Come, take me thither. That is not done quite as you seem to think, said the wolf. You must wait until the queen comes. Soon afterwards the queen arrived with some food in her beak, and the lord king came too, and they began to feed their young ones. The bear would have liked to go at once, but the wolf held him back by the sleeve, and said, No, you must wait until the lord and lady queen have gone away again. So they took stock of the hole where the nest lay, and trotted away. The bear, however, could not rest until he had seen the royal palace, and when a short time had passed, went to it again. The king and queen had just flown out, so he peeped in, and saw five or six young ones lying there. Is that the royal palace? cried the bear. It is a wretched palace, and you are not king's children, you are disreputable children. When the young wrens heard that, they were frightfully angry, and screamed, No, that we are not. Our parents are honest people. Bear, you will have to pay for that. The bear and the wolf grew uneasy, and turned back and went into their holes. The young willow wrens, however, continued to cry and scream, and when their parents again brought food, they said, we will not so much as touch one fly's leg, no, not if we were dying of hunger, until you have settled whether we are respectable children or not. The bear has been here, and has insulted us. Then the old king said, Be easy, he shall be punished. And he at once flew with the queen to the bear's cave, and called in. Old growler, why have you insulted my children? You shall suffer for it, we will punish you by a bloody war. Thus war was announced to the bear, and all four-footed animals were summoned to take part in it—oxen, donkeys, cows, deer, and every other animal the earth contained. And the willow wren summoned everything which flew in the air, not only birds large and small, but midges and hornets, bees and flies had to come. When the time came for the war to begin, the willow wren sent out spies to discover who was the enemy's commander-in-chief. The gnat, who was the most crafty, flew into the forest where the enemy was assembled, and hid herself beneath a leaf of the tree where the password was to be announced. There stood the bear, and he called the fox before him, and said, Fox, you are the most cunning of all animals. You shall be general, and lead us. Good, said the fox, but what signal shall we agree upon? No one knew that, so the fox said, I have a fine long bushy tail, which almost looks like a plume of red feathers. When I lift my tail up quite high, all is going well, and you must charge. But if I let it hang down, run away as fast as you can. When the gnat had heard that, she flew away again, and revealed everything, down to the minutest detail, to the willow wren. When day broke, and the battle was to begin, all the four-footed animals came running up with such a noise that the earth trembled. The willow wren, with his army, also came flying through the air with such a humming and whirring and swarming, that every one was uneasy and afraid, and on both sides they advanced against each other. But the willow wren sent down the hornet with orders to settle beneath the fox's tail, and sting with all his might. When the fox felt the first sting, he started so that he lifted one leg from pain, but he bore it, and still kept his tail high in the air. At the second sting he was forced to put it down for a moment. At the third he could hold out no longer, screamed, and put his tail between his legs. When the animals saw that, they thought all was lost, and began to flee, each into his hole, and the birds had won the battle. Then the king and queen flew home to their children, and cried, Children, rejoice, eat and drink to your heart's content, we have won the battle. But the young wrens said, We will not eat yet. The bear must come to the nest, and beg for pardon, and say that we are honourable children, before we will do that. Then the willow wren flew to the bear's hole, and cried, Growler, you are to come to the nest to my children, and beg their pardon, or else every rib of your body shall be broken. 
So the bear crept thither in the greatest fear, and begged their pardon. And now at last the young wrens were satisfied, and sat down together, and ate and drank and made merry till quite late into the night. End of The Willow Wren and the Bear The Frog Prince From Grimm's Fairy Tales by Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm Translated by Edgar Taylor and Marion Edwards This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Bob Neufeld one fine evening a young princess put on her bonnets and clogs and went out to take a walk by herself in a wood and when she came to a cool spring of water that rose in the midst of it she sat herself down to rest a while now she had a golden ball in her hand which was her favourite plaything and she was always tossing it up into the air and catching it again as it fell after a time she threw it up so high that she missed catching it as it fell and the ball bounded away and rolled along upon the ground till at last it fell down into the spring the princess looked into the spring after her ball but it was very deep so deep that she could not see the bottom of it then she began to bewail her loss and said alas if i could only get my ball again i would give all my fine clothes and jewels and everything that i have in the world whilst she was speaking a frog put its head out of the water and said princess why do you weep so bitterly alas she said what can you do for me you nasty frog my golden ball has fallen into the spring the frog said i want not your pearls and jewels and fine clothes but if you will love me and let me live with you and eat from off your golden plate and sleep upon your bed i will bring you your ball again what nonsense this silly frog is talking thought the princess he can never even get out of the spring to visit me, though he may be able to get my ball for me, and therefore I will tell him he shall have what he asks. So she said to the frog, Well, if you will bring me my ball, I will do all you ask. Then the frog put his head down and dived deep under the water, and after a little while he came up again with the ball in his mouth, and threw it on the edge of the spring. As soon as the young princess saw her ball, she ran to pick it up, and she was so overjoyed to have it in her hand again that she never thought of the frog, but ran home with it as fast as she could. The frog called after her, Stay, princess, and take me with you, as you said. But she did not stop to hear a word. The next day, just as the princess had sat down to dinner, she heard a strange noise, tap, tap, plash, plash, as if something was coming up the marble staircase and soon afterwards there was a great knock at the door and a little voice cried out and said open the door my princess dear open the door to thy true love here and mind the words that thou and i said by the fountain cool in the greenwood shade then the princess ran to the door and opened it and there she saw the frog whom she had quite forgotten at this sight she was sadly frightened and shutting the door as fast as she could came back to her seat the king her father seeing that something had frightened her asked her what was the matter there is a nasty frog said she at the door that lifted my ball for me out of the spring this morning i told him that he should live with me here thinking that he could never get out of the spring but there he is at the door and he wants to come in while she was speaking the frog knocked again at the door and said open the door my princess dear open the door to thy true love here and mind the words that thou and i said by the fountain cool in the greenwood shade then the king said to the young princess as you have given your word you must keep it so go and let him in she did so and the frog hopped into the room and then straight on tap tap plash plash from the bottom of the room to the top, till he came up close to the table where the princess sat. "'Pray, lift me upon the chair,' said he to the princess, "'and let me sit next to you.' As soon as she had done this, the frog said, "'Put your plate nearer to me, that I may eat out of it.' This she did, and when he had eaten as much as he could, he said, "'Now I am tired. Carry me upstairs and put me into your bed.' and the princess though very unwilling 
took him up in her hand and put him upon the pillow of her own bed, where he slept all night long. As soon as it was light, he jumped up, hopped downstairs, and went out of the house. Now then, thought the princess, at last he is gone, and I shall be troubled with him no more. But she was mistaken, for when night came again, she heard the same tapping at the door, and the frog came once more and said, Open the door, my princess dear, open the door to thy true love here and mind the words that thou and I said by the fountain cool in the greenwood shade. And when the princess opened the door, the frog came in, and slept upon her pillow as before, till the morning broke. And the third night he did the same. But when the princess awoke on the following morning, she was astonished to see, instead of the frog, a handsome prince, gazing on her with the most beautiful eyes she had ever seen, and standing at the head of her bed. He told her that he had been enchanted by a spiteful fairy, who had changed him into a frog, and that he had been fated so to abide till some princess should take him out of the spring, and let him eat from her plate, and sleep upon her bed for three nights. You, said the prince, have broken his cruel charm, and now I have nothing to wish for but that you should go with me into my father's kingdom, where I will marry you, and love you as long as you live. The young princess, you may be sure, was not long in saying yes to all this, and as they spoke a gay coach drove up, with eight beautiful horses decked with plumes of feathers and a golden harness, and behind the coach rode the prince's servant, faithful Heinrich, who had bewailed the misfortunes of his dear master during his enchantment so long and so bitterly that his heart had well nigh burst. They then took leave of the king, and got into the coach with eight horses and all set out, full of joy and merriment, for the prince's kingdom, which they reached safely, and there they lived happily a great many years. End of the Frog Prince